This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni and pizza. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you supporting us at patreon.com slash awesomecast. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 707. Uh, time to get geeky, get awesome. I almost did the Mayhem Show. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're at. That means we could swear. That's right. No, no <laughs> swears. No swears. No swears, as Dan Housen says. Uh, anyways, uh, it is the Awesome Cast coming from Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the social medias of all kinds. And we have with us, first of all, in studio, stopping by on her. Massive errands today is the Dutters. <laughs> Katie Dudas is with us. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. meow, meow, meow. We're just meowing for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't hate it. I don't hate it. So let's just roll with it. Uh, oh, no. I forgot where all my buttons were. There we go. Uh, and also with us on the Zoomy Zooms, with the Zoomy Zooms, is Dave Podner. Zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> of the iPhoneography <laughs> podcast and of the runnings. Is there, uh, Yes. Yeah, just, what did you do? Run, 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 running, trying to trying to make sure I don't get caught in the thunderstorm. Did you just, it, was that motivation? So there, what was it? It was the pen, the pens run on yeah, Sunday, yeah. and I know the thunderstorm seemed to. Did it happen like in the middle of the race? Uh near the end. Near the near end. the end. I, I actually I finished, and I was looking for my dad who walked. There's a sh- longer and shorter distance. Mm-hmm. He did the walking of the um the shorter distance. Mm-hmm. I did the running of the longer and I was looking for him. And all of a sudden I saw a flash and I went, I looked at the person who was kind of standing next to me. I said, that was lightning. Wasn't it? That wasn't like a camera flash. Mm-hmm. And the guy said, no, that was lightning. Yeah. So some extra men of eight. I keep getting that camera. I'm like, I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I swapped my switcher. So I have to go from the other side of the board, which is really kind of messing with me here. So you're just going to randomly go and see web pages. Um, uh, so did that add like some extra motivation to get across the finish line then? <laughs> it, it, well, it did. It did. But also I did see a, a nice rainbow. Mm. Oh, during the run, right right before entering the Armstrong tunnels. I, 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 Katie, didn't you? You sent me that, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> there, listen, partner, I had a dog in a stroller with the rainbow in the background, the Smithfield Street Bridge. So, I mean, I, I just need to retire as a photographer. Mm-hmm. You can't beat that. Mm-mm, never. Yeah, th- there, there were so many cute made up puppies in that race there you go yeah there it is oh my look at that uh never. oh that is one happy dog two happy dogs right so there rainbow troy was that troy hill no i my washington in the background yeah yeah, yeah uh, not washington there you go oh man that's awesome it's all downhill from there it's all down for me from there. photographer <laughs> done what more can you do at this point no. you've been in print you've been <laughs> 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 so uh, anyways, we're going to get awesome with you guys. We're going to have some fun here as we have been. And uh, wait, 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 So, Katie, yeah, you were the photographer. We should actually mention that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. The, I blew past that here momentarily. Yeah. So so you got to not run a race Correct. and be a part of it. I got I got a, a, a well a message a, a few days before the race uh, that they needed action shots mm-hmm. and they didn't have anybody who was qualified. But me, they knew somebody who was me. So I got to work with the Penn Foundation, the Lemieux Foundation, to uh, provide action shots for this particular race that they'll use for their marketing. Awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Do, do, do. Uh, and that's, that's, what, that's, why, that's why it's important to be a utility player. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and take action photos. And Not take ever. action photos. Yes. Is that, so, so moving people versus moving cars. And I guess dogs and strollers. Yes. What's, what's, what's more difficult? Oh, dogs and strollers. <laughs> Working with animals is always the worst, yes. isn't it? Well, it was so funny because, you know, out in the rain and we're mm-hmm. used to working in the weather. And it was so funny because everybody's like, oh, you're you're ready because I have my big fanny pack that I, I put them out there. <laughs> oh, you, you brought your whole Baja set? Yeah, yeah. I didn't bring it. I didn't bring rain gear because it yeah. was not in the forecast. But I was able to put um, my less rain resistant camera in my fanny pack. And then I had the one that was weather resistant out. And like and they were like, this isn't problem. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm wet. It's, like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's better than being dusty. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Uh, so anyways, let's get into, ah, oh, damn, I'll figure these buttons out eventually. Um, anyways, so, uh, so let's get into our awesome things of the week. That's right. Our thing of the week. Dave, let's go with you first. Okay. 
So this is actually some a, a program, um, something that we interviewed on uh, iPhoneography. Now this is a new camera app that's only in beta, so you have to be in iOS 18 to do this. Okay. As far as I know, there is not an Android version. Sorry, Android fans. Uh, the idea behind this is, first of all, it gives you a very simple interface. And what is the app? It's called Fig Camera. Fig, F-I-G? F-I-G. Mm -hmm. And you have to have the test flight beta software installed okay. in order to open it up. So the idea behind the person was basically, as you can see on the screen, it's a very simple interface. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you, basically, you can swap, you can swap front and back cameras. You can change the exposure, um, and you can do the one x. In my case, one x, three x, and I think they do six x, which obviously is digital because they only have a three x lens mm -hmm. and a big button in the middle. But you can all. But what it does is it strips away all the Apple magic, mm -hmm. which I know a lot of people have issues with. Because they're like, I want to take a photo, but I don't want Apple to do all the processing that happens there. But I don't want to, you know, shoot and raw and then have to digitally um, process it to make it look like a decent photo. So this gives you as stripped down as possible. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, on where the settings are on the bottom right, you have different options available. So you can do it. Even it has some ones that are presets, basically like standard iPhone camera, standard iPhone shot. Um, a little further down, it gives you the option to have a, a gentle um, uh, exposure adjustment. So you don't have that really harsh and you can make your own. So you can say, OK, I want my exposure to be so much. I want my um saturation to be so much and i want my contrast to be so much and you can save that as a preset so you can just say oh this is my preset for you know um landscape shots and you can use that and get it all set up or you can even make it like sunny landscape cloudy landscape because you may know how things look good and it gives you a non-processed image mm -hmm. Uh, and it, again, they kind of it strips it down because a lot of these pro cameras, you get a lot of um, options and features and things to push. And it, the guy is basically trying to make it as simple as possible to put the camera fe features out in front. I, I, and it does take away. I'm sorry. sorry. Um, no, no, go ahead. If, you, thought. if you're used to a lot of iPhone or Pixel or Samsung photos where they're like sharpened, but they're kind of, it looks fake. You know, it's over sharpened mm -hmm. with all the digital and the AI. This takes that away 100%. So you're going to get a, it may not be as sharp of a shot as you're used to because it doesn't have all that digital adding on, but it doesn't have all that extra sharpening, which sometimes takes away from the shot. And the easiest way, um, I follow someone who uses Fujifilm, uh, the Fujifilm digital cameras, where they have their recipes for, you know, different bit, uh, baked in filters. And this is, in my mind, that's kind of like it. You can set up things to say, okay, I want this to be like this. And I just, all I have to do is push the button. Mm -hmm. So it makes it a lot easier to use to get your shot out. And again, it takes away a lot of the digital artifacts and the extra processing. So, and right now, since it is still in beta, uh, when we interviewed the developer, he his idea right now is there's going to be a base version out for free. But if you want to have the extra features, that will come at a cost. Mm -hmm. But he's still working out the... You know, well, first of all, still working out the beta, of the software, and then working out the business model. Mm -hmm. I like it. Uh, I, I like these ideas. You know, it, this kind of reminds me of a lot of um, things that we we do. You know, when we're using cameras, like you know, certain situations, we we you know, uh, put the training wheels on for certain people in certain projects. 
versus I want something very specific. I want to fine tune things afterwards. Like I, you know, I, I, that, that's really good. I mean, it's a very good camera. I like what Apple does, uh, you know, on its own, but as like, Oh, but I, I need something very specific. This is almost like, I want to say, I guess a pro photographer, at least somebody knows what they're doing with it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, to be able to, to kind of boil this down and take, take again, take away. Cause really what Apple's doing, that those are the training wheels, right? This is for, Thanks to Apple and their processing and all the stuff on there, um, average Joes can have a pretty decent picture that a professional would have had to do, like do a lot of tweaking to get to, you know, Mm -hmm. but it's not perfect, but it gets you, it's great for Instagram, great for Facebook, great for your friends to see it, barely be impressed with the shot. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's for the people don't even know what an exposure is, (laughs) you know, for instance. So I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, Katie, as a, a, uh, professional photographer okay, right. <laughs> what do you think about these with your, with your iphone and and you and, and you've had a year on the uh, on the uh, 15 with all the uh, bells and whistles too i yeah i'm, I'm actually excited about this because i find um using App, apple's tweaks to be a, a huge pain in the butt like just their interface is very it's not user friendly for me i don't <laughs> might work for some people i just i can't like figure out i'm like oh this has to be here i'm doing this thing here blah blah mm-hmm. blah but yeah no i love the the quick adjustments you can make on this and kind of especially like, like saving your own settings it's nice. is it um do you find that because i find this with certain applications um it's kind of like autocomplete no that's not what i meant yeah but it's kind of like the autocomplete of photography isn't it yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> The auto complete the photography. I like it. Uh, so no, that's very cool. So again, it's called Fig F I G. Where um where can people follow along to get more information on this release and, and get in on the beta there, Dave? I, well, the most he's active on is on Threads. Mm-hmm. So and that's where uh, I posted it in the show notes. That's the easiest place I found to get the link uh, for the beta. Mm-hmm. So like I said, if you haven't done a beta through Apple, a beta app, not the beta operating system. Uh, you have to download a program called Test Flight first, mm-hmm. and then once you do, once you download that, there's a link that the, he provides in the thread um, that will allow you to download the Fig camera. That's pretty cool. And I would say this, uh, even though it's beta software and making tweaks, and I have not had the thing crash on me. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I mean, you know, just because it is in test flight just means they're 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 working on something, right? And not mm-hmm. necessarily that they're it's, it's really like I, we've had games. Um, I think like, AEW had some of their games on on test flight that I've tried out over the, the camera apps, things like that that I know that we tried here. So, mm-hmm. um, but you know, but also they're trying to get in front of that wide case, right? To to, to find those issues. So that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to run into anything or it's going to be right. degraded. So. Uh, let me stay on the productivity and uh, uh, visuals uh, thing for a moment here. So I discovered, and I'm trying. I'm actually trying to figure out because I'm actually a little confused. Um, I, I saw when I was going through my apps on Creative, I found Frame.io, and Frame.io is something I've wanted to mess with for a while, but I wasn't really interested in kind of putting up for a subscription. And it appears to be included in Creative Cloud. I'm looking for a clarification on this because when I'm in the app, I'm looking at it again, and it says I have 22 days left for something. Um, I started using it for my clients here. And uh, what Frame.io is, if you're using Premiere, if you're using uh, Final Cut Pro, I think it probably works with some other apps too. It's a, I think it was purchased. I didn't even know. I wasn't aware, I don't think. And maybe we talked about it and I forgot about it uh, because I think it was its own thing and apparently got absorbed by Adobe as things do. Uh, so the Google or productivity software. Um, anyways, or uh, uh, artist so- software, creativity software, excuse me. Um, so so it was like, okay, well, there's a plugin for Final Cut. Let's start playing with this and see how it is. So over the last week or so, I've actually been, I've had a few videos, a few small videos edits that we've had to put in, and there's always a process. I kind of put a video in a unlisted YouTube link to make it easier on people, and I know that's not the best practice, and I've really wanted to move on from that. Um, and then I also have somebody that we work with that, that sends me a lot of his previews in that. I was like, oh, okay, this is really nice interface. I think it worked really well for it. Uh, if you're not familiar, uh, this is, you know, if you're doing a lot of creative work, uh, and there's actually some news to go along with this. Um, th- I mean, this is basically what it looks like. It's pretty straightforward here. You can put the video in. I kind of don't want to pop too much in here. Oh, there's something you've seen before. So we can kind of get that. So it'll upload it directly in. 
And then um, you're able to put comments along. Let me get in the demo one, actually, because that shows a little more fleshed out here. Uh, but the idea is you can get into uh, something like here's a full spot, full commercial spot they got. And you see the little icons where people made comments. So you can actually put, instead of me getting an email with time codes of, hey, I don't think I like this. Hey, da, 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 da. And I've had something where for some reason, all those time codes get so messed up and then I have to still find the clip or something or, or you know, or just the poor person on the other side has to get the time codes, put them in, do a whole thing, you know, make a whole list of things and, and hope it doesn't get too messy. Like this is nice because you can kind of play along here and as you go, stop and add a comment and it's going to register, um, you know, right there at that part of the video and add it to the list. Um, so if you have multiple people, like, like on this example here, it's probably got like, I don't know, it, 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 eight comments, probably got like four or five uh, people looking at this video. Um, that's a lot easier to do that. Now, along with that, and, and again, it looks like it's, I, I don't know if I'm in a trial or what um, when it comes to uh, using this with Adobe because it tells me I have 22 days left and I try to select the free version and it says, oh, you're trying to cancel. And I'm like, well, no, we're not actually. So I need to go back and look at the fine print and if anybody has any clarification on that, please <laughs> let me know. Was, or, yes. I, I just looked real mm -hmm. quick. Uh, from frame.io uh, slash creative cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, it's available for customers with a full creative cloud, all apps, as well as individual Premiere Pro and After Effects subscribers. See, and I, and I have the all apps version, so I should definitely okay. have whatever access. But I think yeah. it's not talking to each other uh, well, because, again, I go in hit the free and says, oh, you're trying to cancel. I'm like, no, I have clients looking at stuff. Please don't. Uh, so <laughs> we're going we're gonna to see what happens in 22 days. I think so. Um, but, no, I'm logging in with my creative and everything like that. So it's been really nice for it. Um, again, I, I think we're not putting giant videos in here or not a whole lot of videos. So I think, like, you know, the threshold, I think it's something like 50 gigs or something like that. You know, I don't want to throw we don't have a massive enough of a project that it's going to be. It's really just like, Hey, we went shot stuff. We're going to put this little video together. That's a couple of minutes or something like that. You know, that's enough to kind of keep it, you know, as long as you kind of keep your housekeeping in it uh, pretty well, you'd probably be okay with that. And it's a nice addition if you're doing video work and everything for, um, you know, for your, for clients or uh, if you're collaborating with anything uh, more or less at this point. Right. So, along with that, uh, there was some news on, uh, frame.io, because uh, Adobe had their, what is it? It was at the uh, Max Conference, I believe. Is that what they call it? The, the Adobe Max uh, announcement. They had some. They had a bunch of announcements, and they they have a apparently Frame.io is uh, um this is good timing for me to get into it uh, because <laughs> it's getting a massive productivity update uh, available for everybody. It's a uh, version four. It's including new workflows, tagging capabilities, and integrations for. And this is where, Katie, I think you might be interested. Lightroom and Canon, Nikon, and Leica cameras. Ooh. So, they, yep, that's what I was looking for. Everybody. So it's going to build that in. Uh, so, I, you know, things like when we're going through masses of photos and stuff, we can probably, you know, share, okay, where are we along here? How are they looking? What do we like? And maybe do our picks in there if you never need to collaborate or something like that, right? Um, so, but that it's, it's really nice. They're making it a little more intuitive. For things like this, here's a, a little bit of a preview of the new workflow. Uh, mine is not nearly as complicated as this yet. <laughs> so, um, but again, I'm really kind of dipping my toe in this right now. Um, so that's the nice thing. I, I, you know, it, it kind of coincided really nice because um, I, I worked on a project over the weekend with somebody that does a lot of things, you know, that I have not been working with. Things like LUTs for cameras, things like, you know, um, I was trying to fix something and trying to figure out the, the LUT system that they were using and everything like that. And, and even even guys this weekend, I figured out LUTs and multicam editing in Premiere Pro just for the heck of it <laughs> at this point. Um, but it's always good to have, you know, cross that over and kind of see what other people are using in case you have to, you know, um, you know, learn it now instead of when you need to get it done. And they're like, oh, we're on this this format and stuff like that. Right. So um, good to kind of keep fresh. And, and that's also if you're using certain software with creatives, you know, it's always good to work with others and see what they're doing or listen to a podcast with other people that work with. That's why I listen to office hours global because mm -hmm. it's just a bunch of people that do production and video and, and photography and everything like that. And I was like, Oh, what's that term I've never heard of before. Um, cause I think, I, I think a lot of us kind of come up in our own silos of like, well, I've learned this cause this is all I've ever needed to learn but you're not growing outside that. So um, so that's kind of my big tip there for this week. 
Um, but yeah, so frame.io, look at it. If you have an Adobe subscription, go check it out because it's probably included. Did you say um, you said the Premiere set and the and the all apps? What were the other ones? Or like the Photoshop Lightroom or anything um, like that? Let me. I need to reopen that. Real I'm, quick. I'm wondering about the Lightroom since they have the integration now. So, but okay. but it's still. I still um, feel like it's a very video based format. But I can see it with pictures too. Right, it's all apps, Premiere Pro, and After Effects. After Effects, okay. So again, yeah, this so is so individual individual Premiere Pro and After Effects subscribers so, along with the creative all apps. So the professional video plans, basically. Mm -hmm. After Effects, of course, is the um, you know, kind of more graphics, motion graphics, things like that kind of thing. So, Katie, what is your awesome thing of the week? Meow 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 meow. Meow 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 meow. She she came she came back into the room with doing meow meows. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, something about my awesome thing of the week. It reminded me of my awesome thing of the week. I was yeah. just meowing to myself as I usually do. Uh, so there, <laughs> the the uh, cat cat fanciers association convention in Ohio had Kataoki. Uh, oh, you sent me something about yes. this the other day. So, okay. So it's essentially folks doing karaoke, but it's cats. So they're meowing the songs um like nine to five and whatever some of the other ones they were doing yeah <laughs> he's in a bath so uh, the, the we don't have the audio going here but you this fellow is in a bathrobe while they're singing there's actually words like, well, he's looking at an ipad as if there's words it's just meowing isn't it yes. it's meowing to music but you have to meow there's like five the, of them yeah you gotta meow at the right time you can't just meow randomly that's like a sheet music or something is there more yeah, that's uh, just no. They're all just the same. That one video. Well, I mean, the most. Oh of them no! Are that I one. ended up on Cowboy Bob. I, I oh, this is one of those those things. Um, wow, <laughs> this is incredible, isn't it? So the guys in the back with their, you know, he's holding <laughs> his iPhone up, and the uh, this is incredible. Yes, and I'm so sad. I didn't realize this was a thing because I would have gone and I would have done this because that's my life, anyways. Mark, meowing songs. Mark your account. Yeah, no, no, that's that's legit. That is definitely it. That's how you communicate when, especially when you're tired. <laughs> um, hold on, let me do something here. Maybe I can uh, in air. We can uh, kind of kind of see what this sounds like here. Excited. Wow. Are you doing Rugrats? <laughs> um okay um this is the this is where was this in ohio the, the cat fanciers association <laughs> convention in ohio this hasn't been columbus this feels like a columbus kind of thing <laughs> we know um, cats shows and events oh man oh. They're, they're definitely gonna be doing this everywhere now it's, okay it, it's gone oh, yeah. i mean it's, it's all the craze it's everywhere like can we do our own I don't see why. Can we not. do karaoke? We can do karaoke night here at uh, Sorgatron Media. Oh, that if would you be want. I mean, I'm looking to do more music things. So, oh my I mean, gosh, that's we great. We got to we can live stream it. It'll be great. It'll be great. It'll be fine. <laughs> you can host it. Yay! <laughs> Finally. There you go. Mark Finally. You found your calling. Yay! <laughs> As you move around, I'll take action shots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. For host and photographer. There yeah. you go. Mm -hmm. Double dipping. That is your awesome thing from. It's Katie, Katie Dutter. Oh, I think I got a loose connection there. Sorry. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's me. <laughs> Don't know what that's about. Let it's me double. Me. I did that. We'll double check that. We broke that. And that has been everybody's. This is the most awesome cat. This is the awesome thing of the week. I'm getting used to it. It's coming along. It's coming along. Hey, thank you everybody that is supporting the show on Patreon. patreoncom slash awesomecast. Our friends at the uh, coffee club level, Cynthia Klosky, and at the financial level, Michael Fedor, John DeGore, and, hey, Dave Potters. Dave Partner and his cats. 
There you go. Thank you, everybody, that is supporting the show. You can check it out. We got a Patreon-only feed over at patreon.com slash awesomecast and the uh, Patreon post show uh, when we do it is up there as well. And uh, and again, you know, hey, use, there's, a, there's, a, there's a nice private channel and chat and community over there, too. If you have anything about the show you want to talk about, off the books, not on the, the Facebook group or anything like that, you can hop over there too. So, now let's get into some more news items. Yep, yep, it's the news. Um, and also, shout outs to Kid Mental who provides these uh, sounders for us, doing some really cool stuff over at the Rankin Community Center. We're doing it here for a while. We're looking to bring it back to Sorgatron Media, the, uh, the, the cipher that he was doing. And uh, it was cool to uh, see his first one uh, yesterday and, and start seeing what he's building over there. So, uh, check him out, kidmental.com for the latest for that. So, um, this is one, this is my kind of sub awesome thing of the week I want to share with you guys. It is croissant. And I, apparently I've been on my browser the whole time. Uh, <laughs> switch your thing. I'm going to get it, I swear. Um, so it's called croissant. croissant. And the idea is that, because um, one of the biggest complaints is I didn't have anything like a Hootsuite, like a buffer or anything that really worked with Blue Sky Threads or my Mastodon server, right? Um, and then I this was mentioned. I didn't even know what show this was mentioned on, honestly, to probably this week in tech, probably something else. Um, it is a, I believe it's three dollars a month for the app uh, for the subscription to use this thing. Um, I just went ahead because I'm like, I'm gonna try. This. Did, did the try the month cancel thing expire thing so I can try it? I'm like three bucks. Uh, I'll take a flyer on this thing, right? So um, the idea is again, it's gonna, it's, it's, it's that holy grail. It's it's that cross posting that you want mm. uh, between those platforms that you're trying to get into but always seem to forget about, like I do. Uh, for for threads and and buffer and everything like that, and even I've seen things that will cross post or um uh, if I if this then that. By the way, I was trying to explain if this then that to a wrestler the other day yeah, that yeah. that just joined Twitter and <laughs> trying to play. Hey, do this, this, and this kind of thing. Uh, we really need to do that social media session <laughs> over there with the wrestlers because <laughs> there's some questions being asked, and I was like, I, and I just gave the dude a whole session on this thing. Um, and then, and then his tag team partner, you ask him what I was doing with my hair back in the, uh, late two thousands. Cause I posted some old videos. Uh, so anyways, they're young uh, they're young and tall. Oh God. Um, anyways, croissant, um, let me show you here. Uh, I mean, it's real. It's, it's, and it's only posting. It's not, you're going to, I don't believe that um, as much as I played with it so far, uh, you're able to like bring in all the feeds. So it's not like that. I mean, I, you guys per I'm thinking like, I think Hootsuite, like you could just have a feed that was all your Facebook and Twitter back in the day, right? Does that seem like, mm -hmm. is my member berries working with that <laughs> appropriately? Um, but if you go into Croissant and you get to pick the, um, by the way, I, I will point out, you do get to pick the icon there. I have a nice little rainbow croissant going on there because I couldn't, because I couldn't pick a color. So I picked all of them. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, we are live. Testing croissant. 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 Plural. And I have it set up for the uh, awesome cast and the wrestling mayhem show. And you see we got our icons at the top, but you hit your send and make sure your guys are selected. And you can see I got the uh, awesome cast mm -hmm. one. So these are the blue sky ones with the butterfly. We got the Mastodon ones. And that is, and notice those are our own server. That's sorgatronmedia.social. And, and if this, then that would only do if you were on Mastodon server for any automations. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been kind of a limitation <coughs> there. And you do have the threads for those as well. And so I can post no. up. You're going to take a second. You get a check okay. mark on all of it. And it is out there in the world. Well, I'm still, there we go. Threads seems to take an extra second or two. So, well, quick question. Um, can you do one on each? Because I noticed you had one checked on each. So could you do, you can do like a Twitter or, or a thread, or if you had two threads that you wanted to do, you could do both? Uh, two threads? Well, let me see here. So we'll get in here. And, well, I haven't had to, but it, yeah, you can. You can pick oh, two okay. threads. Okay. Like if I wanted to send something like network wide, I can select all mm -hmm. of these as well. Yeah, that's why so. I was thinking in, in terms of that or. Okay. Yeah, so that's, actually, that's, that would be nice because if when we do like a Sorgatron Media thing and be like, "Hey, this is happening everywhere," you know, now mm -hmm. I I just need to do it here. And then also, I have my mechanisms, of course. Of I post, you know, those. those uh, uh, have we talked about here about these cascading mechanisms? Like you post to Instagram, that posts to Facebook, uh, and posts to Threads, and then posts to Twitter because you set up an if this then that kind of thing. Like like 
you know, that kind of like multi-triggering kind of system when you post uh, something in one place. And I know you don't get it native everywhere, but of course, Facebook's all going to play together and I just want stuff on Twitter. I kind of don't care about the quality of it right now, <laughs> to be quite honest. So just because that's where we're at right now. And honestly, my Instagram going over to Twitter works really well because you have the first image up there and you got a link over to your Instagram for the rest of it. So it, it kind of, and I do get reactions off that. Just, you have to be very conscious on that first picture when you do it that way, though, if you're if you're thinking about your Twitter audience. So anyways, um, yeah, I, like, like Katie, I know I know you're juggling a lot of social media and I don't know that you've, have you dug much into, you know, where year or two out from all these alternative Twitter <laughs> ah. <laughs> have you poked at them anymore is this something that could help out oh my gosh yeah I think it would be very helpful I, I don't know because it's like I, I feel like we use other ones that are paid mm -hmm. that just don't get the results that I would like to see with them and it's a little more complex than I would like it to be I yeah, hate this one because I think Buffer has a lot of these features yeah. too but you got to be on a pretty high tier from the sounds of things of saying in this article right social pilots so. when we've used and, mm -hmm. yeah I don't know. Like, I just like, it's like, bah, 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 go, bah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's simple. And, yeah. and sometimes it's, I mean, you still have to say, okay, I have this stack of social. Mm -hmm. I have this stack of social, you know, you like, you still have to separate that a little bit. Yeah. Just do the things. I have not played with images on here or oh, video. Whoa. So mm. I, and I have, uh, more recently, if you're unfortunate enough to be following me on any of my, uh, um, I guess blue sky or, Threads social media um, for these shows. I've been posting. I'm trying to post the video clips over there now, just to kind of see the behavior and see if anybody kind of gets in. I don't know that I get much reaction on these yet, but I still just want to get in practice mm -hmm. in case one does become the next Twitter or next thing or a next Plurk or whatever. Yeah, Plurk. I know I can't get. I just found the app on my phone the other day. Plurk. Like, Should I? Should I? <laughs> yes. The answer uh, is yes. <laughs> so, Work it. So cross posting a plurk, unfortunately, is not labeled in this situation. That's ridiculous. So, um, but it was playing with it like I was live tweeting a little bit of. I was watching the pay per view after the, uh, after the after the the after the uh, fact there. So, oh, I just found I just found <laughs> little creature comfort features here. Like you can change your croissant, you can change your color, you can change your uh, uh, post icon Ooh. from the horn to the paper plane to the arrow. Uh, so, but yeah, it, again, three, it's two ninety nine subscri subscription if you want to get into that. Um, and uh, you know, if you want to try it out again, I, I like this again. I, I especially if it's something new like this that I don't know if I'm going to build it into my everyday life. Get in there, hit that subscribe if you're with them on the Apple side, um, and just cancel it right away. And then when you're like, "Oh, hey, I was using that," you'll you'll resubmit and you'll know if it passes the passes the go test i suppose for you right <laughs> so um because i mean yeah exactly i have been resisting but this 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 works the other way too because i've been going using all trails the last couple of weeks like uh -huh. pretty well and i haven't subscribed for like a couple of months because i just wasn't using it just just life didn't get, yeah. let me get out um and it keeps bugging me but everything i want is there <laughs> so it, other than it bugging me i'm just like oh man it's getting Old. I'm not traveling that much. I don't think I'm going to use it for like three, four months. I'll wait, I guess. You know, <laughs> yeah. We'll we'll see how that goes. So, anyways, uh, what do you guys want to talk about next off of the list? There, or anything else you're bringing? Ah, Mastodon has toys. Mastodon has what now? Toys, toys, toys. toys. It's the last thing, the last article in your okay, thingy. Okay. Mastodon has toys. Uh, so part of the way that they are funding their research or their expansions and what they're doing, mm -hmm. uh, is with toys and one of them is a stuffed <gasps> elephant a stuffed elephant i love mm -hmm. it look at that guy i love the picture it's just hey, you like the one for the croissant with just a picture of the food croissant <laughs> on, on the other one i don't know what tech crunch is really simple with things so mastodon the, stuffed toy do they have a shop or something Began yeah selling its own mass it looks like it's just mastodon stuffed toy right now that's 45 dollars. okay in federation beige that's a good <laughs> size i don't know you know how wow. tall she is, but that's a good size of a. Uh, that's a good size elephant. Deliberately well, friend sized and friend shaped. <laughs> you say friend sh shaped. De deliberately friend sized and friend shaped. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. So you'll have to buy a seat on the airplane. Is what that means. Um. <laughs> I do want to get one for travel. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Your comfort travel mastodon. I like it. Why not? I, I mean, I feel like. Does it count as a pillow? Does it? 
<laughs> Does it count as a carry-on? Because it's kind of a good size. Ah, currently shipping is only possible in the EU. EU. Oh, no. No. no All right, I'm we got done. some EU friends to help Boo. us and import this thing. So is, uh, is, Mas- <laughs> is Macedon EU- European-based? or uh, It's federated, so it's not based anywhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's everywhere. It's, uh, it's everywhere and nowhere. Everywhere and nowhere, except the elephant is only in Europe. Okay, so is there a name for him? Is uh, Macedon stuffed toy available for purchase in the EU? Other regions to come later. Share your pictures with Plush to Dawn hashtag. Plush to Dawn. I need to follow this. There it is. Oh, there's there's more uh, uh, fun pictures with it. Uh, there's oh yeah, it's just on uh, camping. Uh, as your camping buddy. It's your uh, going out on the boat buddy. I guess. Wait. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. That looks like that looks like the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, yeah. How'd they bring that? <laughs> Must have imported them for that thing. <laughs> so, anyways, plush the dawn is the is the term of the day. <laughs> plush the dawn. <laughs> Love it. Uh, let's see, uh, Potter. What do you want to get into here? There's a lot. Uh, to, there's a lot to dig into. Yeah. Let's let let's play with some chopsticks. 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 So that's the SpaceX. Ah, yes. So we all know SpaceX is kind of known for, sorry for the barking dogs. Uh, we all know that what, wait, SpaceX. That, that, no, Zoom's very good. We're not even getting yeah, the barking dogs. Oh, good, good. Uh, SpaceX is known for making as much reusable as possible, mm-hmm. including the boosters on the Falcon, uh, which come right down on the on the boat or on on land. However, with the heavy booster, the, the larger one they're doing for moon and Mars missions, it's the the first stage is going to be too big to land like that. Mm-hmm. So what they did was slowly bring it down right next to the launch. And there's two arms that caught it mm-hmm. that they're calling chopsticks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now there was there's a little tweaking. There was some damage when they caught it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the idea is Basically, they catch it that way. They can go out, lower it back down, do as minimal as possible to get it back up, and then reuse it again and again. So instead of putting it in the ocean, where you know, even if it splashes down with a parachute, you have corrosion, you have ocean, you have it goes right back to where it is. And like I said, it's just too heavy to have the legs that would be stable enough. And of course, what's crazy is it, this looks fake. It's real. Is the, the videos up here? Yeah. Katie, okay, I didn't know if you'd seen this yet. Uh, yeah, it kind of yeah. settles right into the thing and uh-huh. it catches it. That's really cool. <laughs> that's wild. Um. Yeah. So no, that's cool. <laughs> I, and for whatever you want to, you know, whatever you think about, you know, uh, uh, the founder and everything, SpaceX itself while not perfect, is doing some really cool stuff in pushing batteries mm-hmm. here. So you kind of acknowledge yeah. that the engineering that's happening here. Um, so so this is so this is an alternative. And I noticed I didn't realize because the video I saw and you got a picture on here in this article. I thought this was on a boat like they've been landing them on. Uh, I mm-hmm. didn't realize it was a tower like on land. Yeah. So. This is actually, I believe, the launch tower where it launched from. Oh, geez. So it just went back home. Mm-hmm. It that's went back awesome. home. Yeah, that's, like, that's yeah. Great. That's the idea is that you launch from a place. Mm-hmm. It first first stage separates, comes back down to the launch. The second stage goes up, so it gets enough velocity for orbit that cuts off right when it hits orbit, so that can land wherever it needs to. Mm-hmm. And then the third stage can moon, Mars, larger satellites or larger objects that need a little more boost than the Falcons, than the regular Falcons. So you have the uh, the Fal- Falcon Heavy is what they call it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And like I said, that first stage has to ha- be heavy enough that the legs they have set up for the regular Falcon 9, they're like, the legs would have to be so large, it would add a lot of weight, kill the aerodynamics. How about if we just catch it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's that's awesome. So um, mm-hmm. that's uh, that, that that's cool. Um, so... And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what, what goes with that. Hey, there, there being other uh, 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 companies in this in this race right now, so yeah. that can't even bring astronauts home sometimes. Um, so ew, that's 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 not a good look. So, um, but yeah, no, good to see. Good to see them still still doing some very mm-hmm. cool stuff. So hopefully this gets us to Mars or or the Moon at least or something the fun. Moon. Yeah, 
in our lifetime. So, um, but that's cool. Awesome. Katie, what do you want to talk about next? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I lost the list. Let me just talk. I'll just keep rambling until I find the list. Uh, uh, ooh. Uh, official Nintendo Museum. <laughs> yes. So this is the official. Uh, uh, so this is about the official um, uh, uh, Nintendo Museum having a little bit of a uh, odd thing happening. Uh, the museum is in... Is it in? I think it's in Tokyo, right? Or it's in? Let me double check this. Oh, well, either way, that's not the important part of it. Um, so apparently, they had a kiosk playing uh, Super Mario World, and it was discovered that uh, it's running on a Windows-based PC emulator. And if you know the history of Nintendo, they don't really like emulators too much, mm-hmm. and have litigated almost everything possible. Um, this is from uh, uh, at Chris Mac Thirty Two appears on Twitter. Um, kind of showing off a little bit uh, from that uh, issue there. So well, let me get this video up here so we can show off here. So he's got a, they got a Super Famicom uh, controller and everything, and he's kind of poking at it. And uh, I think this comes up here in a minute. Nope, yeah, Twitter video sucks and doesn't load for reasons. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you're in the middle of it, and it, it's a really cool kind of setup there. Um, so, and yeah, and I do believe this is the, um, the, the, the Japanese, uh, uh, museum, uh, where this is happening. Let's see if we can get this video to work. Of course it's not going to work. It makes a very windows sound is what the, article, Oh, does it? Yeah. That's oh, how, that's what was happening in the video. He yeah. was hitting the button, the extra button. And it makes a window sound. Yeah. Instead of, mm-hmm. instead like, of a hmm. Mario sound. Yeah. So, um, that kind of goes along. <laughs> Add that to the um, error screens that you find on kiosks in your as you're traveling uh, situation. So, uh, yeah, that's that's not a good look, Nintendo. On that. They don't have an extra just Famicom sitting around they can throw that in, or they're just worried about that thing going. Um, I don't know. So, uh, while we're on Nintendo, have you seen the alarm clock? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was I saw that because I wanted to get it for my nephew. But like, I definitely won't get into all of it, but I, I don't care. It's so cool. It's got, so I, I haven't even gone into all that. It was funny because there was something, some kind of FTC filing with it where somebody was like, oh, there's going to be new hardware and it's got this new technology. Um, it's got the uh, 24 gigahertz um, uh, millimeter wave sensor in it. It's like, oh my God, what are they going to do with this with gaming? No, it's an alarm clock. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's not even a big button at the top. It's more like a... Um, it's more like a light up situation. It looks like it's got an LCD screen on it. And, and I know it's kind of more, you don't actually have to hit it to stop it. You just need to wave at it, uh, apparently. And it's got, you know, uh, it's got characters from Nintendo games and fonts that go with Nintendo games and everything like that and, and, and sounds and, and things like that. So um, that's basically the idea. It's going to be a $99 uh, <laughs> alarm clock and it's going to be available in early 2025. So you can check that out. Um, there are going to be free updates to say in here uh, to add more um, alarms to it. Uh, so that's going to be a pretty big thing. I, like th- Every time I see something like this, it reminds me, oh right, Nintendo is a toy company. Mm-hmm. They've always felt press. We're not a video game company. We're a toy company. And of course, they're going to give you an alarm clock. It's weird because like, I feel like this is something that's usually licensed to something like, you know, we've seen Lego sets that have some really interesting uh, in- innovation in it and everything like that. Um, but uh, yeah. I, I sent, so I just put a link in there uh, in our notes and it's from the Nintendo store. So you can see, like it, it goes through, like it, you get the alarm before the alarm, what happens when the alarm comes on and then you get a visitor that arrives and then you can hit a brief snooze <laughs> and then it's time to get up. Uh huh. Yeah, scroll down. Oh wait. Scroll down. Oh, down here. Yeah. Or... So keep going. Keep going. Oh, so, there you go. There so we that, go. So that shows all the steps, like what, what happens before. Before the alarm, you see Mario sleeping. Mm-hmm. The alarm begins, and he kind of gets up and looks around. Okay. Then and then then Peach arrives mm-hmm. and says hello, and then you got a brief snooze version, and then it's time to get up, and there's Bowser with a top hat. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> so and you did it. You get a celebration when you woke up. <laughs> Fantastic. Yep. I really think I want this for myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's an all-day experience. Wake your way and track your sleep patterns. Okay. I guess, you know, if this is for kids that don't have Apple Watches, I think that makes a lot of sense. Although it's still a $100 alarm clock. So I don't know. But if you're already buying Nintendo hardware and games at those prices, I'm sure this is nothing. 
So as I say, the Apple of video games. Uh, so uh, what else we got here? We talk about SpaceX. We talk about the Nintendo things. Um, boom, 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 boom. Did you see, Katie, that Blue Sky is having a moment on threads? No. What did they do? At some there? point, um, Blue Sky's account on threads has been um, trending uh, on top with the rising complaints about Meta's moderation policies, moderation policies, says uh, in Gadget here. Um, things like, we're not like other girls. We're not owned by a billionaire. Uh, <laughs> heard people were talking about us, so we created an account to share some more information. So they basically just did this. Just created this. Blue Sky underscore social over on threads. And of course, you know, Meta's always always under some kind of thing about their policies and things like that. So um, so that that was kind of fun. That <laughs> So... I, and again, Blue Sky is a sort of, um, I guess, decentralized sort of situation, right? Well, no, I guess not entirely. Well, I don't know, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> um, but it's it just kind of funny that somebody popped in here and, and decided to start trolling threads on its own platform. <laughs> so, um, so you can go check that out and follow Blue Sky Social to see what I... You know what? Let's see what they're up to. Let's see if they said anything recently. <laughs> So threads.net because we couldn't get that really really medic what was threads.com did we ever figure out what that what that was well I'll look on but they couldn't um it, it doesn't load anything but still they couldn't find anything mm. so I don't know. they didn't want to pay for it <laughs> like they don't have money mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no. it's already got uh, 6,500 followers and let's see now they're just doing updates um oh they got less snarky. Mm. Uh, over at Blue Sky, we're not building an alternative app. We're building an entirely open ecosystem where developers can create apps. Da 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 da. A little bit of that, that kind of thing. Um, content not available. So okay, it's actually informational, and they're not just trolling people anymore. So, but also they've had a few days here to get into this. Um, and they like they followed up like they heard people talking about us. Um, they actually have a thread about how moderation actually works on Blue Sky. Um, versus, you know, Facebook has had problems for years with moderation, mm. right? So, so there, there is something um, to, you know, they do have teams. They are handling stuff like that. They welcome news, politics, and other important conversations. Because isn't that something? Isn't isn't Facebook like 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 suppressing political things? I thought I heard or. Um, so I, whatever the thing is this week, sometimes they are, sometimes they're not, or they yeah. they're not at inconvenient times or something like that, right? So, um, but anyways, so go, go, go blue sky. Again, if you don't like the platform you're on, there's plenty of options, plenty of options out there. Come with me, sky. friends. Let's go. Exactly. Right. Take your friends. Let's go. We'll pick a, pick one. Maybe me a clerk. Right. Make it happen. Um, there is a new iPad mini. Was this an Apple event just the other day? Did I see? No, it, no. it was a uh, press release today. A press release? Oh, no. Yes. So basically all it is is a spec bump. But it is going up to where, um, as Apple tends to do, they didn't raise the price. They just increased. They put a new processor in. They raised the, uh, the storage you have. Mm -hmm. So now it starts at 128 instead of 64 mm -hmm. and it uses the a 17 chip, which was the one in the um, iPhone, sorry, iPhone 15 pro. Okay. So, so, relatively so new it is still. a year old chip, but it's still plenty fast to do whatever you want. Sure. But it will, it will be able to run Apple intelligence when that comes out, supposedly this month, when 18.1 comes out, when it's the first the Apple Intelligence stuff coming out. It's the 15th. We're halfway there. Coming soon. Yeah. We hope. Probably. We're all going to have an but, Apple Intelligence Day. We're really all, all trying stuff on it, right? Oh, yeah. So when, yeah. Because we're all going to get that upgrade at the same time. So the, Now, I would say the one advantage with the Mini, it's not as powerful as the Air, mm -hmm. and definitely not the Pro, but sure. it is 8.3 inches. Yeah. It, well, so it, it, it's a lot smaller, and it doesn't need to drive yeah. as much, right? Exactly, exactly. So uh, I know a lot of people just like it because, excuse me, it's easier just to carry around. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not 11 inches, not 13 inch where you need like a bigger bag. It can fit in most purses. Yeah. You can just throw it in there and it's a lot smaller. Or, or, it's or, easy to or, handle with your hand. Or purses, if you will. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or cargo pants. <laughs> uh, yes. Jenkos. 
Jinkos. There you go. <laughs> well, especially since the latest iPhone, the 16 Pro Max is 6.9, and this is 8.3. Nice. It's less than an inch and a half there, bigger. There, there you go. Yeah, that's there what I'm saying. My... It's only it's it's an inch Look, and a half there's... bigger, but it's not. Of course, it's square. As iPads tend to be. Oh, Dave's still talking to you, even though I'm on the camera. The camera. Oh no, it's me. Oh no. Yeah, I went too, too used. far. I went <laughs> too, too long. I went too long with it. Um. Anyways, no, it, it, and and those are nice. Like I, I, mm -hmm. I, I continually see the smaller, um, you know, like uh, iPad minis and Android tablets, um, in the in the wild on on production gigs or um think you know something where there's like te technology and need to be scores and, and things or, or interfaces or checklists and you know um and and you know there's a reason there's networks in the middle of nowhere when we when we're out there for events right uh so you can support these and, and have a server in-house and everything like that right um so no super 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 handy for for things like this mm -hmm. i mean I've, I've been looking at trying to get just a stack of like a you know kindles or something just to have around for for things like this right so but but definitely if you want something that's more apple like oh no we need something that's apple apps you know i mean hell right. i still have just and, and i mean it does, since it is has mm -hmm. the a17 it will run all your regular ipad apps mm -hmm. and i know i don't even so know you don't have to worry about it not working yeah. i don't even know what generation this one is <laughs> so <laughs> it's the one we got for 99 cents several years ago at at&t so <laughs> you know we get getting some use out of that though oh, yeah um but yeah no that's that's how now, now the the one announcement i think everyone's waiting on and that is rumored to come in october so they may have that announcement for the mac mini mm -hmm. and uh, all the macs with the m4 processor in it that's rumored to be in this month Explain to me what's happening with that because I keep seeing I've been seeing benchmark screens on social media for the they, M4. This is it's not this announced is yet, right? Oh no, it's leaky. This is as the, the, the is that that Russia that stuff? Is that is that how all those MacBooks ended up in Russia with the M4s or something? Uh, allegedly, uh, maybe. Allegedly, yeah. Okay, but but yeah, this this is as the, the only thing Apple put out recent or ever that was this leaky mm -hmm. was the iPhone four. Yeah, they said there's the worst thing since. So, so the background. So since the, bar gate. <laughs> as far as I understand, the the statement here is supposedly you know if they're if they're going to be announcing very soon Mac Minis or you know or anything with the M4 mm -hmm. chip, it's already been made. It's already been made in China as they all are, and yeah. somebody got a pallet of these and got it to Russia, and they're selling them uh, online through interesting means as from what i understand it. but if nothing else at least people are getting their hands on these and doing full uh benchmarks and teardowns full and things like that yeah. um so but i think there are they're, they're, they're definitely selling them too um you know oh, on yeah. the black market so uh so that so this is again like yeah no this is literally like like a bunch of mac unannounced macbook pros macbooks whatever got fell off a truck <laughs> and found their way into another country and uh that's pretty wild but i mean that, that I, it's kind of amazing it hasn't happened before now considering but i don't know the ins and outs of all that well, security has always been really tight mm -hmm. at foxconn's facilities mm -hmm. because they're the final sure but apple's to trying to spread out their production to other places mm -hmm. like that means you got a lot more holes to plug exactly exactly like there's iphones being made in brazil and there's iphones mm -hmm. being made in india and they're stretching different areas out. So it's harder to kind of keep a, keep a lockdown on it. Also, if China is, let's say, the government of China is maybe a little mad at the U.S., you could easily see um, them saying, well, we were protecting this American company, but yeah, eh, maybe I, I'm not saying anything, but international relations do come into you sure, know politics sure. goes into everything especially large companies like this yes well one more item i see it's getting close to uh pumpkin time here but i don't know why chill is not even on the episode this week uh <laughs> so i'm just sensitive to the time um no one thing i'm excited about uh that came out in the story this week apparently this is going to start rolling out to um xbox insiders this is something that was promised as early as 2022 that Xbox is, uh, is finally going to get to the insider beta program <laughs> here. Um, but uh, the the Xbox Cloud Gaming 
will um, stream your own games in November. This has been a frustrating thing for me. Um, obviously, I subscribe to Game Pass, and I like having that uh, that that variety of games. But you know what's 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 more annoying than your work? You're playing a game, and it goes off of Game Pass, and then you can't even play it if you're playing it on on streaming, right? Because even if you purchase the game and it goes away off of Game Pass, it's no it's no longer provided on the cloud gaming platform. So what they're going to do is is when you purchase a game, much like a lot of times it's available on Xbox, Xbox One, and, and Windows if it's compatible, right? Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to be included. So I can play my Street Fighter VI and my Mortal Kombat 1 on the stream and my WWE game that's never on Game Pass on the streaming on my, uh, on my phone <laughs> or TV or whatever. Um, and, uh, so that's going to be rolling out here. I think they said in November for the insiders program and, uh, before expanding it to, uh, more, uh, Xbox users and more games. So it's not even going to be an entire game, but say the same support the stream thousands of games, um, where they're going to be doing that. This is, uh, this is, they are revealed yesterday that starting in November, uh, play, players will be able to play and purchase games on the Xbox app on Android. That's the other big thing is you can purchase the games in the app on Android for playing on Android through the cloud gaming platform. This is the uh, this is the this is the realization of of kind of the dream of Xbox stream uh, gaming. So um, cool to see they're kind of pushing that, and uh, it's kind of wild to see because I've been thinking about because I've been using that um that that. You know, very interesting controller that was. They had trouble getting <laughs> worked up here, um, and uh, and uh, it, it, it's 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 interesting because like, like you know the controllers are not like Xbox controllers entirely feel wise, but even like the stuff they're showing it looks like the controller I have. It doesn't look like a nice like backbone or something like that, right? Just a random controller that you put in a phone or one of those uh, uh, rog devices like Chilla was showing us that were just for streaming. So very interesting. So um, so we'll see those rolling out too. Katie Dudas. Hi. Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> meow, meow. It's Katie. Katie Dudders. You, you got a lot going on. You got a lot on your social. You guys, you're everywhere. You're literally everywhere yes. today. Yes. So. <laughs> All over the city. You'll see me running around. There you go. Go to katiedudas.com for all the links for all the cool things she does. Maybe she's, uh, I don't know, on screen at a Steelers game. Maybe she's taking pictures for the pens. Maybe she's, who knows where else? Who knows? I just show up random places. The studio. The studio. <laughs> ah. come by. I'm like, of course, come by. Always in person <laughs> when possible. Always fun. And of course, Dave Ponder, iPhoneography podcast. Yep. And ProfPod on all the socials except for uh, TikTok where I'm ProfPod PGH. Dave Potter, you'll find Dave Potter on there. And you'll oh, be like, this looks like Dave Potter. There you go. <laughs> this sounds this picture <laughs> sounds like Dave Potter. So I'm at Sorgatron on all the social medias as well. And uh and mostly you'll probably just see a lot of stuff from this show and other shows that we do here. Thank you everybody for supporting us again. Thank you everybody who supports us on the Patreon as well. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron. I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gay. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like to discuss from an LGBTQ lens? If so, a gay and his NB is the podcast for you. Hear us break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. Listen to A Gay and His Envy on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.